Now, in this segment, we're going to be doing single phase transformers followed by three phase transformers. A, tra a transformer is kind of an amazing piece of electrical equipment. It's got no moving parts whatsoever, they're real high in efficiency. It's kind of amazingly simple how they operate. See, the way a transformer operates, you know, you've got a primary winding and a secondary winding. What happens there, if you take a piece of iron, a piece of steel, you wrap some wire around the primary side. Wrap some more wire around the secondary side. Hook this thing up to an AC source. This thing sets up a big magnetic field here using AC. AC alternates back and forth so you can transform it. Now, <laughs> you can transform any voltage from one level to any other level determined by the number of windings you have on the primary compared to the number of turns on the secondary. You know, if you've got more turns on the, uh, on the primary than the secondary, you're going to step the voltage down. If you want to step the voltage up, you can put more turns on the, prim on the secondary than the primary. Step the voltage up. It's all done with magnetic induction. And that's where your turns ratio is determined by the phase-to-phase -phase voltages. Let's say in this problem we've got a 7200 volt primary and maybe a 241 20 secondary. Now, you know, our turn, once you establish that turns ratio, you can move the load from the primary to the secondary, or secondary to the primary, you can move it back and forth. If you have a, take a voltmeter, read across here, it's going to read 7,200 volts. Across the phase of the secondary, you're not going to read 120, are you? You're going to read 240 volts. Only place you read 120 volts is either hot wired or the neutral. You're reading half that phase voltage. So our phase to phase voltages are 7,200, 240. That'll give us our turns ratio. If we take 7,200 volts divided by 240 volts, that'll go 30 times. In this case, we got a 30 to 1 turns ratio. In other words, we got 30 times more turns of wire on the primary than we do the secondary, so we're stepping the voltage down. Now, once you determine that turns ratio, like I said, we can take the load from the primary and move it to the secondary or secondary back to the primary with a turns ratio. And if, uh, you know, they'll, they'll just have it written out, maybe 7200 slash 240 slash 120 volts like that. And if you have a problem at all determining where those voltages are located, if you just think about it, make yourself a little sketch, just think about it. If I read across here, I'm not going to read 240 or 120 on the primary. I'm going to read 7200 volts. Across here, I'm not going to read 120 volts. I'm going to read 240, the phase voltage. Half the phase voltage, line to neutral, line to neutral, is where you get the 120 volts. Uh, neutral loads. Well, we got this little sketch. Let's put some loads on the neutral here. Neutral connected loads, rather. Let's put a little more up here. Now, we got four 10 amp loads connected to this thing, neutral connected loads. If everything's turned on, we got a perfect balance on this thing, don't we? If everything's turned on, the neutral load, zero. They're canceling each other out. You know, at any given instant, you're one direction, one line, opposite direction, the other, and they're going to cancel out here. Perfect condition, zero on the neutral. Absolute perfect balance. Now, another way they might ask you a question concerning the neutral load, four 10 amp loads balance close as possible. What's the maximum neutral current? Now, neutral load can always get higher than zero, right? I mean, if you've got a perfect balance, flip off one little 60 watt light bulb. Okay, it's not zero anymore. Okay, maximum neutral current would be if you turn one line totally off. Now you don't got any, you don't have anything to cancel here. Maximum neutral current under our condition is 20 amps. Perfect condition, perfect balance, everything's on. 
it can get higher than that on that neutral. Watch out for that zero as a neutral low. I've never seen that so far in almost 28 years of teaching classes and taking exams. I've never seen zero as what they're looking for. It can get higher than that. Okay, now, let's see. This phase winding is having to carry, in this case, 40 amps. The whole load, of course. The primary phase over here is only carrying that 40 amps divided by the turns ratio of 30. Well, that's roughly, what, about 1.2 amps or so in the primary? That's why we use AC as a distribution system. You know, say to feed a hotel, over at the generating plant, they step that voltage up to a real high level, send it across the power lines, which are out in free air to begin with, dissipating heat real quick. Now, when they get that, get back over to the, to the hotel, they got to set another transformer to step it down to a usable voltage, probably. Naturally, not probably. I turn the power line, that hotel doesn't contribute much in current to those lines. Because maybe that's a 69 kV line coming over here. 1,000 amps in a hotel, 69,000 watts, 69, 69 kV line doesn't contribute much out there. They step it back down to a usable voltage. That's why we use AC as a distribution system. You can, you can uh, transform it. Okay, now, let's screw the board up a little bit here. Transformer efficiency. Let's see what happens with efficiency on a transformer. On an exam question, you always assume a transformer is 100% efficient. Unless in that question they tell you differently. If they tell you differently, then you deal with it. And transformers are real high in efficiency. You know, we did motor efficiency back in the, in the motor video. I don't know, it's, what was it, 60 something percent efficient? Motors have a lot of moving parts. Transformers don't have moving parts. They're real high in efficiency. American Electrician's hand, uh, handbook says they're 96, 97, 98, even as high as 99 percent efficient. You know, in, in reality now, there's a little copper core heat loss between the primary and secondary. You get rid of the heat, you still got a little bit of resistance in the windings here that you can't totally get rid of. So in reality, they're not an absolute 100%, but they're real, real high in efficiency. But assume, unless they tell you a difference, this thing's 100% efficient. Now, to show you what happens with efficiency, I always do this. I take the numbers from a one horsepower, 230 volt motor. Full load current on that motor is eight amps. I'm sure you remember the table to find that, right? Table 430.248. Now, that same motor connected 115 volts. Got a 16 amp full load current. Now we're just going to use these numbers. I'm going to make my primary 230 volts. It's got an 8 amp load. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not hooking a motor on the primary side. I'm just using the numbers as an example. If we were, work, work transformers out in watts, volt amps, 230 times 8 is 1,840 volt amps. Secondary, we're going to make this thing 115 volts. It's got a 16 amp load. 115 times 16? 1840. Now in reality that load is connected over there on that secondary side of course. You turn this load on, the load in this case is 1840 volt amps. Primary's got to supply that load. Assuming no loss whatsoever between the primary and secondary, it only takes 1840 volt amps to supply a load of 1840. Volt amps primary and secondary equal at 100 percent. Now if they make it less than 100%. Let's make it 97% efficient. That's fairly realistic. Now, watch what happens here. The formula you'd use, one of those way back on the first formula page in your workbook that came with your videos, this is the formula you could use. Input. Input's the primary. 
To get the input, take the output. Output's a secondary. A secondary load. And divided by the efficiency. Or in our case, now we got an output of 1,840 volt amps. Okay. 1,840 volt amps. We made it 97% efficient, divided by 0.97. That primary load's going to go up. That primary's going to have to work a little harder here. Our load goes up to 1,897 volt amps in this case. If I go run a primary side, we don't have 1,840 anymore. It's going to take 1,897 volt amps to supply the load of 1,840. And in turn, the amp load's going to go up a little bit. We'll roughly say that's about 8.2 amps or so. Now, see what happens? You turn this load on, the load's still 1,840. And it's, that primary has got to supply that 1840. Now it's got a little, got to work a little harder here. It's got a little 3% loss between the primary and secondary in this case. So it's going to take 1897 volt amps to supply a load of 1840. Got a little loss in here. But see what efficiency affects? Efficiency only affects the primary side of a transformer, not the secondary side. Now, on a test question, sometimes they'll tell you, they'll word it something like this. Uh, a transformer at 97% efficient. What's the secondary voltage? Secondary voltage stays the same. Efficiency affects the primary side of that transformer, not the secondary side. Okay, I got to clear the board. We're going to do a little something else. Be right back with you. Power factor. Very simple little formula for power factor. A lot of electricians are just hope they don't get a power factor question. I don't know anything about that, you know. It's simple and easy. Keep it simple, keep it easy. Power factor is watts or true power divided by volt amps, which is a power, apparent power. Now, if you get a power factor question, in that question they're going to give you a certain number of watts operating at a voltage drawing a certain amount of amps. If you multiply the volts times the amps, and that total is equal to this, they match perfectly. It's all usable power. It's 1.0, it's usable, also called unity. Doesn't always happen in an AC circuit though. You know, the current, the amps and the volts, they may get a little out of phase as they alternate back and forth. If they alternate back, they may get to leading or lagging each other a little bit. Then they'll get a little out of phase. And there's wattage that are there, but it's not usable for anything. It's kind of wasted wattage. If that happens, that watt load is going to be smaller than when you multiply your volts times the amps. The volt times the amps are going to be larger. This is going to come out less than one. Now, think of it this way. Can't use my beer mug. A guy years ago said, using that beer mug as an example of power factor increases, encourages alcoholism. Really? We can't do that. Okay, we we'll use a roller coaster. Looks kind of like an AC sign, but this coaster is carrying the voltage as it alternates back and forth. Got an identical coaster running right along beside this one. This one's carrying the amps, the current. Now as they alternate back and forth here, as long as they hit all the peaks and valleys right together, they're right in phase, you got this condition. It's all usable power. But in an AC circuit, that doesn't always happen, you know. You get a little inductance setting up, a little capacitance setting up in that circuit, they get a little out of phase. They get to leading or lagging each other a little bit here. Maybe the volts has already taken off. Now, as they alternate back and forth here, they're kind of chasing each other back and forth. Now, there's some watts there. there are wa there's watts there. But they're not usable for anything. 
that's, that's when the watt load is going to be smaller and when you multiply the volts times out, this is going to come out less than one. Now I've always thought, tried to think of things that maybe during that exam, it'll, you'll think of something, okay, okay, I can relate to this, something you can relate to, an electrician. And I, for years, I used a beer mug as an example of power factor. Now this is not a beer mug. No way. We don't encourage alcoholism. You know what that is? That's a root beer. See, if you go into the bar, go into a biker bar, ask for a root beer, when they fill that mug up, there's the apparent root beer you've got. They fill that mug up and they charge you for everything there. Oh, that's not refreshing. This thing's got to settle down just a wee bit here. There's your true refreshing root beer right there. That's the part that's usable. There's a little bit of here, a little foam on that thing. Get no benefit from whatsoever. That thing's out of phase as it alternates back and forth. Maybe during your test, you'll remember that, you'll think of it, root beer. Okay, I'm gonna stop the uh, video for a second and we're gonna throw some three phase on the board here. Keep it simple and easy. I'll be right back with you. Now, let's do some three-phase transformers. We've got a little format that we use for three-phase transformers. Keep it simple, keep it easy. You can work any problem, any problem that they give you. you sketch out the problem, make yourself a little drawing. They're gonna give you the load in one, one spot or the voltage in one spot or whatever. And you just move it around using the little format. And all we're doing here we're taking a couple of formulas to, that are confusing to some people. Just put them in words. If you've got a delta connected transformer, a couple of things happen here. Phase volts, line volts are equal on a delta. They're equal. If, if you've got the phase volts, you've also got the same thing in the line on a delta. Now on a delta, the current is not equal phase and line. A phase and line. Your phase amps multiplied times 1.732, the square root of 3, will give you the line. On a, on a delta connected transformer. If you have the li line amps and you need the phase amps, divide it by 1.732 from the line back down to the phase. You see the formula is written like this. EP equals EL. Phase volts equal line volts. IP, amps in the phase, times the square root of three equals I line, IL. It's much easier just to remember it this way. Y or star connected. You might say it's the opposite of a delta. The volts in one phase times 1.732, the square root of three, will give you the line volts. If you've got the line volts, need the phase volts, divide the line volts by 1.732, you're back down to the phase. On a Y or a star, phase amps, line amps are equal. You see that written this way, EP times square root of three equals EL. <laughs> Much easier. IP equals LP, phase amps equal line. Keep it simple, keep it easy. We'll sketch this out and see how it works in just a minute. Now, this is a single phase transformer. It takes the primary and the secondary winding. In the code book, there are still a few references to the old two phase system. A two phase system took two transformers. And here's a three phase system. A three phase system is three single phase transformers. Different things happen according to the way the thing's connected. Now, if you're going to connect this thing for delta, and you're probably familiar with the little delta shape there, what you do there, you take these two wires, to connect these two together. Take one line off of here. Tie these two together, another line, then you take this one all the way to this one. Taking one line off of here, another line off here. Now, what you've done, you just series those windings for a delta. And then you've got your three lines out here. Tug it up. 
Y or star, and you're probably familiar with a little Y shape there where you bring one end of each transformer together and ground it for the neutral. What you do there, bring this one over here and you ground it. You take one line off of here, ground this one, another line, ground this one, and the third line. That's a delta Y. Now, keep this handy where you can use it. It's back on your first, uh, first formula sheet in the workbook that came with your videos. Keep it handy. Take it with you to the test. Pretty easy to memorize it. Now, let's see how this thing works. I'm going to clear up the board a little bit here. Okay, delta, first of all. We'll see how that delta format works. Now, on a delta-connected transformer, if you want to read the voltage in one phase, you connect that voltmeter across so you know you only got one phase involved in this thing. Let's say that thing reads 480 volts. That's fairly common. If you take that voltmeter loose and connect it between either two of the hot wires out here, it's going to read exactly the same thing. It's easy to remember on a delta. Phase and line volts are equal. You got one, you got the other. Now, let's put a 10 amp three phase load on this thing. 10 amps per phase. If you put an amp probe on this winding, in this case it's going to read 10. Move it over here, it's going to read 10 also. You got 20 amps trying to flow into one line, but it won't double to 20. You got a different angular relationship. It'll be the current one phase, in this case 10 amps, times 1.732, square root of 3. In this case, we got 17.32 amps in the line of this delta. Each of the lines with a delta three phase load. So it's easy to remember. If you got the, if they give you the phase current, you gotta have the line current. Multiply it times 1.732. And that line current on a three phase load on a delta is always gonna be higher than the phase current. Now if you've got the line current, and you need the phase current, divide the line current by 1.732. Then you're back to the phase. Now let's clear this off. Let's do the Y, then we'll do a delta Y. Okay, now, Y connected. That's where you bring one end of each transformer together, ground it for the neutral. Okay, now on a Y-connected transformer, if you want to read the voltage in just one phase, you connect that voltmeter, you can't go between two hot wires and just keep one phase involved. You've got to read from one to the neutral. A very common reading there would be 120 volts. This one read 120 to the neutral, so will this one. Won't be 240 out here. It'll be the voltage in one phase times 1.732 commonly referred to as 208 volts between either two of the hot wires out here. 208 one, this is an approximate 208 because of the rounding here of the square root of 3, 1.732, it just keeps going eh? in reality. This comes out 207.889 or something like that, commonly referred to as 208 volts. And that's why on a, on a three-phase transformer problem, or three-phase problem period, Usually they word the question as closest to, approximately, they give you a little leeway because of that. Because of the rounding here. Now, same 10 amp load we uh, had on the primary, let's put it on the secondary, on the, on the Y here. You know, if you put an amp probe here and it reads 10, that line comes off of that one winding only. It'll read exactly the same out here. 
It's real easy to remember, I don't know why. If you got the phase current, you need the line current, they're equal. If you got the line current, you need the phase current, they're equal. They're equal. Now let's clear the board. Let's put a delta primary and a y secondary up here. Keep this handy. I gotta erase this now. We gotta have the whole board for this. This is the way you want to handle a three-phase problem, three-phase transformer problem. Draw what they give you. If they give you a delta, draw yourself a delta. Take the time to make a sketch. That sketch will make, will be a lot clearer than that typed out question usually. We got a Y secondary, draw what they give you. Now, when you get it sketched out, you're concerned with four space places. Put a circle around the line of the secondary. A circle around the phase of the secondary. A circle around the phase of the primary. And a circle around the line of the primary. In that question that got typed out for you, they're going to give you a number or two somewhere along the way here. And those numbers are going to fit in those circles. And what you're looking for is going to be in one of the others. Keep that little delta Y format handy, just move it, move it around. Let's say on this uh, delta Y connected transformer, line voltage in the primary is 480 volts. What's the phase voltage in the primary? Delta connected phase and line volts are equal. We got 480 volts. Line current in the primary, which is delta connected, 100 amps. What's the phase current in the primary? Now, voltage is equal, line and phase on a delta. Current's not equal. We've got to take out 100 amps. Remember? Divided by 1.732. That'll give us the current per phase on this delta. 100 divide 1.732, we've got phase current of 57.73 amps. Now, we started out on the primary. If they give you a problem over in the secondary side, you've got to have at least one more number here. You've got to have a number of turns primary to secondary. You've got to have a secondary voltage, or they've got to give you a turns ratio. You've got to have something to move from the primary to the secondary side. Let's say they tell us this is a 4 to 1 ratio. Okay, if we've got 480 volts in the phase of the primary with a 4 to 1 ratio, get your secondary phase voltage, take that 480 in the primary and divide it by 4. Your turns ratio. You got 120 volts in the secondary. See, these two windings, they're sitting there like this. The 480 is over here. With a 4 to 1 ratio, you got 120 over here. Like that. Okay, now we took our 480, divided it by 4, we got 120 volts in the secondary. Our line voltage, we're Y connected. 1.732. Approximately 208 volts between either two of the hot wires on the secondary side. Now, we started out with 100 amps in the line of the primary. We moved it to the phase of the primary. We got 57.73 here. 100 amps divided by 1.732. Now, once we get the phase current, we can use that turns ratio to get the secondary phase current. We're stepping the voltage down from 480 to 120. The current's going to go up. So we take this 57.73 amps in the phase of the primary times the terms of 4. 57.73 times 4. We 
got 230.9. in the secondary phase. If we have the secondary phase current, we need the primary phase current, divide it by four. It'd be back at 57.73. Now we're on the secondary side, which is Y connected. You need your line current. Phase and line current is equal on the Y. 230.92. Look how really easy it is. One, two, three, four. You got it. Okay, let's see. What else can they do to us on this thing? Ah, oh, total three phase load. On a delta Y connected 482.8123 phase transformer. Secondary line current is 230.92 amps. What's the total three-phase load in volt amps? This is where the three-phase happens, out here. If they give you a question in the phase, that's a single phase. That's one phase. Now, three-phase happens out here. To get that total three-phase load, 208 volts, line voltage, 230.92 amps line current in each of the three, times 1.732 for the total three-phase load. Okay, 208, 230.92, 1 1.732, 8319. We got 83,190 volt amps. If you need KVA, you divide that by 1,000. 83.19 kVA, total load. Or you can work it on the primary side. You can work it anywhere you want to. You just make sure you use the uh, numbers in that particular location. See, if you've got 480 volts in the line of the primary, and you've got 100 amps in the line of the primary, total three-phase load times 1.732. Now, there's going to be a little variation here in the total volt amps and total watts because of this rounding here, not because of efficiency. And like I said before, that's why they, they will tell you it's closest to approximately 480 with 100 amps and 1.732 will give us 83,136 total volt amps. Divided by 1,000, a little over 83. Well, I said about a 40, 44 watt variation there because of the rounding. It's approximately 83. You could work it per phase, you could work it single phase. 120 times 230.9 times 3. I don't like to do that. You know why? Gets you out of the habit of using 1.732 for the total three phase load, which is by far the biggest mistake made on three phase transformer problems, forgetting to use it. Okay. On this particular transformer, we've got to load a little more than 83 kVA. Let's go down to the supply house. Let's buy a transformer to feed this. Let's go get a Delta Y 482 a 120 Three-phase Delta Y. And let's keep it kind of close here. Uh, we may have to special order this transformer. We're going to order a 90 kVA transformer. 90,000 total watts will handle 83,190 total watts. With a little left over, huh? Okay, I'm going to clear the board. We're going to put up on the board here what we've actually bought. Let's see what we've got here. Let's get this thing out now. We've got another delta Y. Secondary. 
And by now you know where all our voltages are located. We got 480 in the line of the primary. Delta connected, that gives us 480 in the phase of the primary. They're equal. Phase and line voltage are equal on a line. On a, sorry, on a delta. Now on the secondary side, we got 120 volts in the phase to the neutral, which gives us 208 volts in the line. 120 times 1.732 is 208. Okay, we bought a 90 kVA transformer. Here's what we've actually got. We got three 30 kVA transformers. Each winding on a three phase transformer is one third of that total capacity. Kind of important to remember that. And assuming 100% efficient now, we got 30 available per phase on the secondary side. And a 482A120, that gives us another 4 to 1 ratio. 480 divided by 4, 120. 120 times 4, 480, like that. Okay. Maybe they tell us or ask us. On a 90 kVA 482A123 phase delta Y, fully loaded, got it maxed out, using all 90,000 watts. What's the line current in the secondary? Now that's a three phase question. A three phase load's connected out here, we're using all 90,000 watts. Take your full 90,000, divided by 208 volts, 1.732. That's going to give you the current flowing in each of the lines on this three-phase transformer. Or, work it single phase. In that phase, you've only got 30,000 available operating at 120 volts. you got 250 amps per phase. 250. Why connected? you got 250 in the line. Actually, this comes out 249.88 approximately. 250 ounces in the line of the secondary. Working in two spots like that, you get the same answer, disregarding the little fraction here because of the rounding. You know you got the right answer. We got 250 ounces in the line of the secondary. We've also got 250 ounces in the phase of the secondary. We can use our turn ratio to go to the primary. If you take that 250 in the phase, divide it by your turn ratio, Primary phase is carrying 62.5 amps. Now, double check that. Work it single phase. One phase only, single phase. Take that 30,000 available in that phase, divide it by 480. You get 62 and a half amps in the phase. Same answer. Now we're delta connected. We need the line current, 62.5. Delta connected times 1.732 gives us 108.25 amps per line in the second and the primary. Double check that to make sure. Fully loaded, 90,000 watts at 480 volts. 1.732 is 108.25 amps. Per line, same answer. Keep it simple, keep it easy. You can work any problem that you have here. Now, I hope you followed that. That's quite a bit of scribble on that board at one time now. I'm gonna clean this board up. We're gonna make all this come together real easy and simple. And we gotta do a, a delta secondary also. Be back with you in just a minute. Let's clean this up a little bit.
Now, on a delta secondary three phase, got a high leg system here. We got a 240, 120 delta connected three phase. You know, if you connect a, take a voltmeter and read between either two of the hot wires here, in this case, you're going to read 240 volts between either two. This wire to the neutral, you're reading half the phase voltage. This wire to the neutral, you're reading the other half. Just like that little single phase transformer we had up there earlier. Now, the problem comes in across here. If you read from this wire to the neutral, you got more than half a phase voltage involved there. The easiest to remember formula to get the high leg voltage, if you get a delta secondary high leg system like this, they're going to ask you that voltage. Take your line to neutral voltage, or in this case, 120 volts times 1.732. Comes out to 208 volts across here to the neutral. Now, if they use 230, 115, 115 times 1.732 is going to come out to 199 across there. And that's uh, that's the question they usually ask you. What's the high leg voltage? You know, this thing has a lot of nicknames. A delta three phase uh, secondary high leg system is not very commonly used, not as nearly as commonly used as it used to be. I mean, it's used some in industrial plants where there's a lot of uh, three phase motor equipment, uh, different equipment and stuff, but, and it's still used some as a distribution system. Each transformer is sized for a third of the three phase. That's why out on a pole you used to see pretty commonly a couple of smaller transformers and a bigger transformer. Each transformer carries a third of the three phase load and then this one transformer has to be sized a lot larger. It carries a third of the three phase plus all of the single phase load. You know, so it's a bigger transformer, a couple of smaller ones up there. And one, one advantage to the uh, Delta high leg uh, system, Delta three phase secondary, if you lose a transformer, maybe a transformer, the windings burn out on that thing, you can still keep a portion of the three phase load operating with only two transformers. It operates not at one third, one third, one third, it operates at 57.7% of the total of the transformer. Maybe it's a 300 kVA transformer, you'd take 57.7% of 300 if you lost a winding. Also, it's put in sometime as a uh, open delta system where you, can, only, where you can get three phase out of only two of the transformers. Okay, now, get your workbook. Go to page 33, the workbook that came with your videos. Well, let's work some transformer problems. There's some single phase on here and there's some three phase. Now we're going to pause the video just like we did before. Work these out when you feel comfortable with it. Turn the video back on. We're going to work them out together up here on the board. Okay, let's go over the answers to page 33. First one's a turns ratio of a 480, 240, 120 single phase transformer. 480 primary, 240, 120 secondary. 480 divided by 240 phase voltage, go two times, two to one ratio. Question two, a single phase 460, 230, 115 volt transformer has a total secondary load of 115 amperes. Primary phase current is how many amps? Well, the entire secondary load is energized. Okay, get your turns ratio. If you've got 460 primary with a 230 secondary, you've got another two to one turns ratio. If you've got 115 volts in the secondary, divided by two, you've got 57.5. I've got 115 amps in the secondary. Divided by the turns ratio of two, you've got 57.7 amps primary phase current. Number three, a three phase delta Y, 482A120 volt transformer, 25 kVA. 
fully loaded, you use them all 25,000 watts. The secondary line currents approximately. Okay, you got 25,000 volt amps, 208, 120 secondary, divided by 208 line volts, and divided again by 1.732, secondary line current 69.39 amps. Question four is the terms ratio of a 480, 240, 120, delta, delta connected three phase transformer. You got 480 in the primary, 240 in the secondary, that'll go two times, you got another two to one terms ratio. Five, the line current of a three-phase load is 20 amperes. Source voltage, three-phase, 208, 120. That's Y-connected. You can tell by 208, 120. Total three-phase load in watts. 208 line volts. 20 amps in the line times, don't forget, 1.732, approximately 7,205 volt amps total load. And number six, a three-phase delta Y transformer having a 480 volt primary, a 208 120 volt secondary. Primary line voltage is variable, less than the primary phase voltage, greater than the primary phase voltage, equal to the primary phase voltage. Equal to the primary phase voltage. It's delta Y. The secondary, the primary line voltage is, primary is delta, equal to the primary phase voltage. Okay, now I'll put an extra question up here. This is one fairly new question. It's kind of thrown a few people. Extra question. We've got a 75 kVA transformer. Has primary phase amps of 90. Primary winding resistance is 0.16 ohms. Total watts loss is how many watts? It's not even a transformer question. Keep your little Ohm's Law circle handy. This one threw a lot of people because they try to use the 75 kVA. Look what you've got here. You've got amps. You've got resistance. What are you looking for? Watts. What's this? See your Ohm's Law circle? You're looking for watts. You've got three formulas here. we got amps and resistance, right? Watts equals I square times resistance. Watts equals 90 amps times 90 amps times 0.16 ohms. We got 1,296 watts closest to 1,300 watts. Means nothing to the question. Basic Ohm's Law question is all it is. They just used a transformer to put the loads. Okay. Work these transformers questions back and forth. There's another page in your workbook here of transformer questions, some extras. And you know if you get hung up along the way, get in touch with me. You got my phone number. And like I said earlier now, if for some reason I don't answer that phone, I've got a lot to do, leave me a message. I will call you back just as quickly as I can. And if you're studying at night, you're going over this material, you get hung up somewhere, I've said it several times, 9 a.m. Eastern Time to 9 p.m. Eastern Time, seven days a week, give me a call. And I do that because usually when you get some dinner, it's a little kind of late in the day, you get some dinner, then you set up your little one hour a day study schedule. That, if you get hung up somewhere, that's when you need to call me. If you need to call me, you get in touch with me. When you bought this set of videos, you hired me to get you through the calculation part of that exam. That's my job. I'm going to do my job. If I don't hear from you, I think you got it. If you, if you need me, you get in touch with me. Okay, let's stop this video, study this stuff. Let's get signed up for that exam. Let's pass that exam.